Welcome back guys to our minimalist run of The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past for the Super Nintendo. We are now getting ready to take on the Hyrule Castle Tower dungeon, which is kind of the midway point of the game of sorts. It's the last dungeon here in the light world before we start taking on stuff in the dark world. And we also do our first battle with Aghanim the Wizard. In this room, if you're at full health, just kind of stand where I'm at and shoot uh, beams from your sword at these gold-armored ball-and-chain knights. Pretty much do the same thing in this room, just stand in the doorway and shoot beams. Easy enough. Got the key. This isn't really much of a puzzle dungeon, it's more of a combat-based dungeon. In almost every room, or most of the rooms anyway, your way to progress is to defeat all the enemies in the room. There really isn't much uh, puzzling type areas in, in this dungeon. This room will probably be the most puzzling one of all because it's a little maze. Other than that, really, this, this is about as puzzling as this dungeon will get. And like I said, it's the last dungeon here in the light world. After this, we'll be collecting crystals. Whatever the case, let's just keep on moving. Just ignore those blue guys. Kind of like how the soldiers, some of the soldiers anyway, look different here in this dungeon. Just be careful here not to get knocked off. Okay, he just walked off. Light up the room some. Got two bow-wielding soldiers and one sword-wielding soldier. Just be careful around them, take them out one at a time, or as they come, whatever. There we go, got a key and some arrows. There really isn't a whole lot more to this dungeon, like a couple more floors. Each of the floors is pretty short. Another room right here that we had to defeat all the enemies in. Same with the next room that we go to. And pretty much same with the room after this, only you don't have to defeat all the enemies, you only have to defeat one of them. Same difference though, like I said, this is more of a combat dungeon than a puzzle dungeon. Pots do quite a bit of damage, so yeah. Here's the last room on this floor, let's just ignore the soldiers. Alright, we're now on the last floor of the tower. Well, second to last, actually, but there really isn't anything on the last floor except for the wizard, so we may as well just say that this is the last floor. There we go, now we're on the last floor. Aha, Red, I have been waiting for you, <laughs> I was hoping I could make Zelda vanish in front of your eyes. Behold, the last moment of Princess Zelda. You'll be okay in the crystal, won't you, Zelda? Yeah, I think you'll be alright. Don't worry, I'll come and get you later. Ho ho ho, with this the seal of the seven wise men is at last broken. It is now only a matter of time before evil power covers this land. After all, the legendary hero cannot defeat us, the tribe of evil. We are armed with the power of gold. Ho ho ho, now I must go. Good thing you showed me where you went. Oh, so? You mean to say you would like to be totally destroyed? Well, I can make your wish come true. Really? You can grant my wishes? Cool. But I didn't wish to die a wizard, I'm sorry. Pretty much all this battle is, is uh, hitting his fireballs back at him. The little blue circly fireballs, those ones you can't hit back. In fact, if you hit them, they'll split up and you'll be hit most likely. So just try to dodge those, you know, walk past them. Whenever he gets in the top center of the room, he's going to fire lightning straight down. So, uh, yeah, just come up to the top and stand by him. He won't aim it at you. You can also deflect his fireballs with uh, the bug catching net, but since we don't have the bug catching net, we'll stick to the sword. Heck, even if I did have the bug catching net, I would still stick to the sword. Because the sword's a lot easier to use in this battle. 
But really, that's about all that there is to this battle. Just hitting his fireballs back at him. Don't try to hit Aghanim with your sword, otherwise you'll take damage. The only way to hurt him at all is to hit his fireballs back. Probably only have like one or two more hits left on him. Probably just one. As soon as he shoots another fireball. Well met, like the true hero that you are, but I am not ready to admit defeat yet. I will draw you into the dark world. I'll round and around. Alright, now we're starting our journey here in the dark world. Red, it is I, Sahas Rala. I am communicating to you across the void through telepathy. The place where you now stand was the Golden Land, but evil power turned it into the Dark World. The wizard has broken the wise men's seal and opened a gate to link the worlds at Hyrule Castle. In order to save this half of the world, the Light World, you must win back the Golden Power. You must also rescue the seven maidens who Aghanim sent to the Dark World. As members of the bloodline of the seven wise men, they have power that will surely help you. The maidens are locked in hidden dungeons full of, da full of evil creatures and dangerous traps. The Palace of Darkness should be your first goal in this world. Red, I can rely on only you. Please make this old man's wishes come true. I beg you. Well, sure thing. Before we take on our first crystal dungeon, though, we're going to do a little bit of side questing to get a couple of uh, items that are required in order to beat the game. The first item we're going to pick up is the Quake Medallion, it's up here to the north. And uh, the flippers are also located right nearby where the Quake Medallion is, only we'll have to return to the light world for the flippers. That's alright though, not a big deal. We're also going to pick up the Ether Medallion, or Ether Medallion, however you want to pronounce it, I always pronounce it Ether. But uh, we're going to pick up that medallion before we take on the first Crystal Dungeon as well. So, uh, yep. Yeah. We're not too much further away from uh, where we get the Quake Medallion. Just one more screen to the north. Cool, we got a heart back. Just one more and we'll be back to full health. And uh, to get the Quake Medallion, you'll have to throw something into a circle of rocks. This circle right here. Was it you who disturbed my peaceful nap? I will give this to you if you go away. This is the Quake Medallion. Its magic causes the ground to shake and defeats nearby enemies. Watch your magic meter. Alright, time to go back to the Light World. To be honest, of the three medallions in this game, I think that the Quake Medallion is the least useful. It's still an alright medallion though, and it'll see some use throughout this run. We're now at the Zora's Domain, or the Wild Blue Yonder, whatever you want to call it, Zora's Waterfall, etc. We're here to buy flippers that'll cost 500 rubies. I bet the Zora Master, or whoever it is, doesn't get much business with all of their people attacking us. We're probably their very first customer ever. And up we go. Wahaha! What do you want, little man? Do you have something to ask me? I want the flippers. Wahaha! But I don't just give flippers away for free. I sell them for 500 rubies a pair. What do you say? Wahaha! One pair of flippers coming up. I will give you a free bonus with your purchase. I will let you use the magic waterways of the sea folk, which link lakes and rivers. When you see a whirlpool, dive into it. You'll never know where you'll surface. Wahaha! All right. You bought Zora's flippers. With these, you should be able to swim even in deep water. Alright, time to head up to the mountains. Alright, we're back at the place where we got the Pendant of Wisdom. Right here to the left of that place is the Ether Medallion. That's a little interesting thing you can do. You can throw bombs out onto the sky and they won't do anything. They'll just kind of hang out there like nothing's out of the ordinary. Hold up the Master Sword and you'll get the Magic of Ether. Ether is probably my favorite medallion. It's really good for recovering your magic as well. This is the Ether Medallion. Its magic controls the upper atmosphere and polar wind. Watch your magic meter. Alright, back to the Dark World. 
All right, we're back here at Hyrule Castle. The gate at Hyrule Castle now acts as a portal to the Dark World, so yeah, kind of convenient. Our next uh, stop will be to get our shield taken away. As a minimalist, uh, if, it, if an item isn't required, then, well, I'm going to get rid of it. And uh, the shield, while you're forced to use it for a while, you don't really need it throughout the rest of the game. It's not a forced item, and therefore, I'm going to go have it eaten. Let's go ahead and uh, kill off some of these bombing enemies. They can be annoying. There we go. Let's get that one out of the way. The enemy that'll eat your shield is right down here. There we go. Goodbye, shield. It was fun while it lasted. Alright, next stop, the Palace of Darkness. Before you go to the Palace of Darkness, make sure that you have at least 110 rubies. Because that's the minimum amount of cash that you'll have to pay in order to get inside of it. And we have more than enough to get in. I don't think we'll need money for anything else past the Palace of Darkness. We're just about there. I'm Kiki the Monkey. Kiki! I love rubies more than anything. Can you spare me ten rubies? Kiki, Kiki, good choice. I will accompany you for a while. Kick, Kiki! Alright, if you get hit, the monkey will run off, so be careful. Alright, now we're at the Palace of Darkness. Key, key, key. If you give me 100 rubies, I will open the entrance for you. Key, key, key. Key, key, good choice. Then I will get 100 of your rubies. Kick, key, key. Alright. With that, the entrance to the Palace of Darkness is now open, and that is it for Part 3.